Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Yasujiro Ozu's A Hen in the Wind. Um, now A Hen in the Wind is 1948, uh, a year before late spring, um, of course, and uh, it's one of his most, you could say, unknown films, you know, it's quite a, uh, you know, not too talked about really, um, and of course it comes in this double pack, uh, BFI, with an autumn afternoon, which I'm saving, of course, you know, for one of my last Ozu's to make it more special. Um, but yes, it, um, I just, you know, I think it was my fifth Ozu film, um, that I saw back in January it was I think and I re-watched it again um, just literally re-watched it uh, today and um, you know to, in order to do a review and stuff um, and yes you know I, I, before I um, you know dug into a lot of Ozzy's most well known ones the supplement ones that are on these BFIs I kind of watched them first some of them um, so this was one of them of course um, and it was my fifth Ozu and uh, I saw it I think it was after I was born but um, <clears throat> which of course I reviewed on my channel uh, for the masterpiece, um, but yes, this really this comes before before uh, you know most um, Ozu's post wars films, uh, most of them, and uh, you know it's not really talked about too much, um, which is you know, probably understandable. You know, so much stuff that he, he kind of uh, made in the fifties, and you know the last couple of films as well that are just you know more talked about. They're just bigger films. You know, they're more uh, you could say significant for cinema in terms of cinema history, you know, the Noriko trilogy. Because, of course, let's put it out there, this, I don't think it's as good as, um, you know, the top tier Ozu's. Um, I don't quite think it's a masterpiece, um, but really when I saw it, it blew me away um, in many levels. Uh, a stunning film, no doubt. Um, and it's very different um, <coughs> from most, uh, you know, Ozu films, especially his post-war ones, because um, it doesn't really deal with marriage and stuff. Um, and you know some of the themes that Ozu usually explores, um, but you know once again it does it does you know delve into family life um, and stuff that is universal definitely. Um, but it's very very different. And it, for me, you know, I've said it before, um, you know, one of my Ozu reviews, I believe, um, that this is the darkest film that I've seen from Ozu. Uh, I've seen eleven now overall, um, and I still i still you know after this rewatch probably agree with that still. You know, I still hold that view. Um, certainly, at its you know at its darkest, I think it's darker than any of the Ozu's I've seen. Um, you know, the, I've got Tokyo Story competes with it, and I've, I think Tokyo Story is a lot more movie and stuff. A lot of his films are, but purely dark without any sort of hope and stuff. Uh, there's a couple of moments in this that were really, really uh, you know dark and quite shocking as well. Um, stuff that Ozu you know never really um, I never really seen his other films. Um, but basically, the story is that uh, you know there's this woman, um, and she's she's kind of just waiting for her husband to return from the war, <coughs> and uh, of course uh, she's got a kid in that as well. And um, basically, uh, very early on, the kid falls ill. Um, he eventually, of course, recovers, um, and then but during that time and stuff, when she, he's you know he's <coughs> he needs to be cared for and stuff, um, the mother, uh, played by Kunuyo uh, Tanaka, um, she basically becomes a prostitute uh, I think uh, you know you uh, you learn that it's only just the one time and uh, you know in order to get some money and stuff um, and uh, something uh, kind of Mizuguchi I've seen a lot of his films kind of explore that you know prostitution stuff and stuff uh, problems that women you know women face uh, faced but, uh, yes it's very much it's you could compare it to Mizuguchi really it's the only Ozu I've seen that you could compare to uh, sort of you know the Mizuguchis I've seen um, in the way it portrays the suffering of women and stuff, um, and it's got that really dark edge and stuff. Um, but of course, it's got you know the the <clears throat> for me the the warmth and uh, you know the the sense of hope that Ozu has. Um, it's still you know throughout most of the film, um, aside from a couple of moments that are <clears throat> you know very 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 dark at the end. Um, but yes, it, it basically after that you know the, the husband returns from the war. And, um, you know, he soon finds out that stuff that's happened um, that the wife kind of tells him. And, uh, you know, the husband, you know, is played by Shujo Seno, um, Suji Seno. And, um, you know, a great performance from him. Um, and basically he, he returns and he finds out things and he's not happy about them. Um, and the rest of the film is basically dealing with, uh, you know, regret. Um, but also forgiveness as well, and um, you know, very very dark at times, but um, very very uplifting as well, and very hopeful. Um, and you know, after around the hour mark, there's a particular, <clears throat> you know, ten minute segment that is really really absolutely wonderful uh, stuff, and a really genius way uh, in terms of storytelling to um, 
to bring out, to kind of um, allow, you know, the husband to kind of uh, feel stuff about the wife without actually, you know, them being together. It was a really genius way uh, introducing this other side character. Um, but yes, uh, the cast is wonderful once again. Um, you know, it's not quite as, as much of an ensemble um, as quite a lot of his films. Uh, it's got Chishu Rai again, um, who plays kind of one of, uh, you know, the father's uh, work colleagues. Um, and of course, uh, you know, Suju, uh, Suji Seno, uh, you know, he's wonderful in this film. Um, but most of the other, you know, Ozu regulars, uh, really is most of his postal films, don't really show up in this film. Um, but yes, um, it's a stunning, uh, you know, cast of characters. And once again, the writing is stunning. Um, you know, Ozu would co-write the script once again. <clears throat> and, you know, it's just, just the way that the characters eventually are, are you know, fleshed out. Um, and in fact, they're very flawed humans once again. Um, there is a couple of flaws early on. Um, you know, the stuff I've been praising is not quite there in the first sort of 10 minutes. Um, it's, it's not, it's still very, very good, the first 10 minutes. It's just not quite as, um, it's not got quite as much of a drive as, you know, it should have. Uh, most Ozu films, you know, people say that these films are slow. I never feel that. Um, and, and they say that they're flat and stuff. Um, I never usually feel that with, with the openings, uh, even though they just, you know, <coughs> they're very gradual. Um, but there's a couple of cases, uh, floating weeds, um, really, and this, where they don't quite feel as, as, as good as, as, you know, they're a bit flat, a little bit flat, um, dramatically, and they don't really set up things. You know, this film doesn't set things up perfectly. Um, like pretty much all of the, the films I've seen from Ozu, um, you know, his Noriko trilogy and everything, um, you don't really become, you know, too immersed, uh, you know, you know, as you should have been, you should be, um, you know, in the first sort of uh, 10 minutes of this film. But once a certain event happens, which, um, you know, of course, the son falls ill and stuff, uh, from then on, it's pretty much um, without flaws, really. Um, and it's a very, you know, a stunning film. Uh, for the most part, it is quite masterful. Um, you know, a highly human film. Um, just the way that the Ozu shows the value of life, uh, the meaning of life, <clears throat> and as well, just um, family units and how you know people should just kind of stay together and stay strong um, and forgive each other. Uh, that's one of the main things about this film is forgiveness. Um, and of course, um, you know, um, just every act in this film builds perfectly, really, apart from the, you know that first ten minutes. Once the film you know it gets going, it is really quite stunning. Um, and, you know, just everything Ozzy was trying to explore, pretty much explored it perfectly once again, you know. And the soundtrack to this film is stunning. Um, beautiful soundtrack. Um, and used at all the right moments, you know. There's a lot more pillow shots in this as well uh, than a couple of his past, uh, his past films. Um, and pillow shots are, are great as well. Um, you know, as I've said before, probably said before, uh, Late Spring really is, for me, the, the, film that, the first film where he completely... And utterly perfected the 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 style that <clears throat> throughout most of post war you know Ozu films really um, not that some of the ones before were not as as good a style um, you know like I was born button stuff that was very different because uh, that's a silent film of course um, you you know but but um, and it doesn't plan downplay you know the films before late spring um, but you know I feel that late spring really was the first one that he, he truly mastered the Ozu style that most people know him for um, but this you know it had it had most of them things working in place really you could say um, for the most part this is directed um, you know pretty flawlessly um, and his style you know the, the low ankle uh, the low shots and everything and, and the pillow shots um, and just the way he, he uses uh, nature as well he films nature um, they're all present here really um, Again, this is a lot more dark of the cinematography though, you know, the use of shadows and stuff, um, and particularly towards the end of the film. Um, but really the style is, is kind of like most of his post-war films, um, just not quite as, as, as um, you know, as much as, as late spring, you know, as fine-tuned really, uh, you could say. But, you know, the characters in this film are stunning for the most part, and um, I really just got so invested in, in, in this, um, you know, this, this relationship really between the mother and the father. Um, in particular, you know, this romance, um, it's very complex, of course, and uh, Ozu brings in different, um, you know, themes and stuff that, that kind of uh, you know, make it much more um, dramatic, um, of course, and, and just the way he portrays poverty as well and stuff, very, very moving. Um, 
you know the editing once again is, is so sharp um, so has such a grace to it as well you know and it just combined with the way that he moves the camera uh, well you know the way he shoots the film um, it's just really really wonderful the kid Hiroshi um, he um, you know he was really brilliant as well and uh, just many uplifting moments um, you know involving him um, it's just you know it is, it is a dark film for sure um, but it's very very it's full of hope um, very uplifting and, and just beautifully human of course <clears throat> you know even if uh, Ozu films are at times dark they're always human and they've always got a sense of a sense of hope throughout you know most of the film um, and you know it's just a, s a stunning film really uh, the soundtrack everything about the film um, wonderful and uh, you know the last 10 minutes or so are very very powerful um, extremely powerful extremely moving um, you know it, it's probably um, although the cinematography is, is pretty stunning um, it's probably the it's not quite as good as the rest of the post-war films in terms of that um, you know even floating weeds and stuff um, uh, not to discount this it's just uh, you know maybe I can see why um, this doesn't quite stand out among you know post-war Ozus um, but I actually think this is a better film than throwing weeds um, you know I absolutely love this film and um, you know the script as well in itself is so moving um, and just really as well the second half of the film once it you know it starts um, you know becoming more moving and, and, and dark um, you know it just it's just so perfect really the, the second half of the film there's really not much flaws at all there um, you know it just becomes a film that um, although it's very very short um, you know it, it covers quite a lot of ground and uh, you know, there's many, many themes that Ozu explores, um, with, you know, with ease once again. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, just uh, the last 10 minutes are so powerful. Um, and, you know, the ending is very, uh, very hopeful. Um, just the way that Ozu brings it together at the end, um, it's really quite perfect. Uh, there's not really any flaws, really, um, for that final act in particular. Um, you know, it just it's, this film is not quite masterful throughout. Um, and... Uh, you know, I didn't absolutely love the first ten minutes. I think it could have been a bit better, but really, once you know the, the character development comes in and there's actually a drive uh, to kick things, you know, to to kind of you know add drama to the film, um, because you know at first the main character, the, the mother, um, she's not quite you know the most interesting OC character, um, but once you know that event happens um, after ten minutes, really, she really becomes a, a really highly uh, relatable character. And uh, just, you know, be, uh, wonderful acting um, throughout the film. And, uh, you know, once the husband comes, it just gets, you know, even even better. Um, but, you know, the film just gets better and better, really. It's just really that like, first ten minutes um, and a couple of other moments that aren't quite, you know, enough to call, to, you know, allow, allow me to call this a masterpiece. <clears throat> but um, I think it's pretty close to a masterpiece. Um, and uh, I absolutely love this film. You know, it moved me so much. Uh, Thoroughly human throughout, uh, wonderfully shot and acted. Uh, you know the soundtrack used uh, to elevate many many scenes, and uh, yeah, the hen in the wind. You know it's a very underlooked Ozu, um, but I feel it's a ninety eight percent a stunning film and definitely you know a great film, uh, classic and uh, among Ozu's better films I've seen. Um, but I can't really um, you know I can't say exactly where this will stand. Uh, with, until I see a lot more Ozus, because I've only seen 11. <clears throat> and, you know, most of the Ozus I've seen, I've absolutely loved. There's maybe only one film I don't quite love, and that was uh, Brothers and Sisters of the Toda Family. Um, but, you know, as I'm, that was my first Ozu, so maybe if I revisit that, um, I might feel a bit differently. Um, but really, the, the, all the Ozus after that I've seen have, have really quite wowed me in, quite, in, in some ways. Um, a Hen in the Wind surely does. Um, Highly recommend this film, um, a very different Ozu, you know, um, don't expect, um, you know, a light ensemble like Early Summer, although of course that's very powerful, um, and, and you know, it's not like, um, it's not really got much comedy in it, uh, that's one of the things as well, <clears throat> which isn't a flaw, it's just, you know, compared to his other, his other works, it's a lot more consistently darker, um, and you know, the things it deals with, you know, prostitution and stuff, um, which really Ozu didn't really do too much explore too much uh, apart from this one uh, you know it, it, taking everything into account is a very different Ozu very you know a much darker Ozu um, but highly recommend this film and uh, a great film you know quite close to a masterpiece uh, but just not quite there yet you know due to the first 10 minutes and uh, 
couple of moments that just really took a while to, to, to kind of actually, you know, for me to be fully invested in it um, and, you know, the characters. But really, after the 15, 10, 15 minute mark, you know, it's pretty masterful. It's like floating weeds. Um, it doesn't have the perfect um, first act, but, um, you know, it's a stunning film. And uh, although compared to, you know, these top tier films, it's not quite as uh, as moving and as wowing as that, you know, on its own, um, you know, Hen in the Wind, the stunning film. Uh, yeah. So thanks for watching my review and um, yeah, check out my other Ozu reviews in particular. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.